The following video may contain sensitive content. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi everyone, Lewis here, and I'm here with my last and final interview video leading up to my trip to Cozumel with Die Part as part of my Road to Cozumel series. In today's video, I interview Raina, the Halifax Mermaid, and her partner, Sean, the Halifax Mer Wrangler. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for alerts of when I upload new content to the channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. Okay, we'll I am I am joined by Raina the Mermaid and Sean the Mer Wrangler from Halifax. Hi, everybody. And this is part of my Road to Cozumel series. Very exciting for you. As I leave for Cozumel in a week with, with my good friends at Dive Heart. Tell me about the Dive Heart program. We can talk about that towards the end, Raina. That sounds great. Yeah, I'd love to hear about it. And of course, besides that, we're not only going to talk about how you became a mermaid, we're also going to talk about what's it like to also be a mother because because you gave birth to River last year. That's right. And what does it take to be a professional merfolk? And we're going to start with how you became a mermaid and how Sean became a mer wrangler. <laughs> sure. So it's a really long story and I'm, I'm going to try to make it short for everybody because I could talk for days about how I became a mermaid. But basically I was 21 and very sick. I was having a lot of leg pain and it was making it very difficult for me to walk and do things that everybody else my age could do, which because I couldn't do things, it made me feel very depressed. And I was struggling with university. I really liked going to school, but because I was in pain all the time, I was missing a lot of school. My grades weren't great. And that just kind of contributed to making me sad too. I was living with my aunt and she had a movie subscription on her TV and the film Splash came on and Splash stars Daryl Hannah, who happens to be autistic, too. Yes, I know. And I also happen to like Splash. And you can also watch that now on Disney Plus if you're wondering. Yes, you can. So Splash was filmed in the 80s. And back then, they didn't have the use of CGI the way they do now. A lot of mermaid movies now, like the new Ariel, the new Little Mermaid, they animate her tail because it's easier for them. But back then, Daryl Hannah had to learn how to swim in a costume. And the costume makers uh, had to sort of invent this costume for her. I was really inspired when I was watching the film and thinking about that. And I started researching it and I thought, wow, she's really beautiful. She looks really strong. She looks really agile and graceful. And I don't feel like any of those things. I'm very clumsy. I'm very slow. I would really like to feel that way. So when I first wanted to be interested in mermaiding, it had nothing to do with businesses because this was so long ago that nobody really did it as a business except for like Hannah Fraser and Mermaid Linden and Medusa Serena. They were the only three I knew of. And back then there wasn't much of a community. There was no mer network. Facebook was very new. So people weren't using it to, to chat with other mermaids. And we didn't really know any other mermaids. There was nobody for me to learn from. I had to research it all. So I discovered when I was researching a woman named Annette Kellerman. And she lived 100 years ago. She was the first professional mermaid swimming in aquariums and movies in a mermaid tale that she made. And she had leg pain like me. And she wrote a whole book about her experience with her leg pain and how she used swimming as a way to overcome it. So she had a kind of disease that left a lot of people disabled. But through swimming, she was able to keep walking and not just walk, but swim and perform and do so many amazing things. And I thought, wow, if she could do that 100 years ago, I got to be able to figure out something now. And one of the cool things about Annette Kellerman 
is that she invented the modern day women's bathing suit because in her day, women had to wear great big dresses and they weren't allowed to show their legs. <laughs> Showing their legs was bad. And I, hopefully I can show this, but I love Annette so much that I have a tattoo of her right here. Wow, that's nice. It's beautiful. It's a great tattoo of her. Thank you. It reminds me of all the things that she did that I can do them too, because we had the same problems. So sometimes when I feel down, I think about Annette and it reminds me that I can do, do things too. So Annette went on to be famous and do all these amazing things. And I didn't really think about being famous. I just wanted to swim in a mermaid tail. So we found one online, but there was not much to choose from back then. And the one we found, it was made out of material that felt like a shower curtain. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't like nice silicone or nice fabric. It was like this weird plasticky and we couldn't find monofins anywhere. Nobody would mail us a monofin. Today, you can get them on Amazon and websites. And sometimes you can buy them in stores. You couldn't, you couldn't do that back then. So we had to buy me just two regular swim fins that we put in the tail. And Sean took me to a lake to learn to swim in it. But I wasn't a good swimmer. I did not learn to swim until I was 17 and I only really knew how to doggy paddle. And I didn't like putting my head underwater because I would get ear infections really badly. So I wasn't a very good swimmer, which meant I was kind of scared. I put on a life jacket. <laughs> I had a big orange life jacket and a big and a big orange mermaid tail that looked like a shower curtain. <laughs> and I went for my swim and Honestly, I kind of felt dumb at the beginning. I, I thought it was kind of silly and dumb. I didn't think I looked very cool. I decided to take the life jacket off after I felt safe and Sean was watching me. But I wasn't sure that it was going to be magical like I hoped. And Sean took some pictures. But then when we got home and I saw the pictures, the pictures look really nice. And they really inspired me. And I thought, okay, well, I'm not great at this because I'm new and I'm starting out. I just have to practice and figure out what works for me. And way back then, I had no idea that it would turn into my job, that there would be mermaids all over the world, or that I would have so many mermaid tails. All I wanted to do was just get better at swimming and try to find a way to cope with my leg pain. And that's how it started. Well, let me give you a brief introduction of how I became a merman. Because when I was five, I seen, besides watching Splash growing up, I've seen the animated Little Mermaid. And when I seen that the movie had mermen in it, it made me want to have a tail since I was five. Then fast forward to 2019, a longtime friend of mine who who's also a fan of yours. Her name is Mermaid Moyle o Opal. She became a mermaid herself and got herself a finfolk. And then that motivated me to get my own tail, which, of course, I ended up getting a mer-tail or guppy and Mermaid Linden monofin. And, of course, I did interview Mermaid Linden herself earlier this year. We saw it, yeah. And, and of course... Speaking of Moya Opal, she actually also introduced me to H2O Just Add Water from Australia. And then I found Mako Mermaid's sequel and told her about it. And of course, it, it was a combination of her motivating me to want to become a merman and the fact that, that Mako Mermaid had a merman named Zach. Yep. And it, that those two things convinced me that I should become a merman. And of course, I have a goal of hopefully, you know, becoming a an aquarium merman, possibly for companies like Wands and Wishes, because I love being in aquariums, because I am also an aquarium diver, and do dive over at the um, Adventure Aquarium in Camden, New Jersey, which is across the river from Philadelphia. That's amazing! And I did meet some of the Wands and Wishes performers earlier this year, such as Mermaid Serenity. Mm -hmm. 
They were very nice. Oh yeah. They're very wonderful. One of our friends, um, Mermaid Sky, Hannah, she's yep. wonderful. She's a wants and wishes mermaid. And we met her when she first started mermaiding too. She had a mermaid tail from a German company and it was kind of see-through. Yeah, it's like 2015, 2014. Yeah, 2014, I wow. think. Wow. She started there and now she's a wants and wishes mermaid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just amazing. Speaking of her, I actually met her through Mermaid Mania on Facebook mm-hmm. when when she replied to one of my posts when I talked about a pair of mermaid socks I got from one of my fellow volunteers. And, and I said, yes, I am an aquarium diver there. That's wonderful. She's hopefully, really nice. Hopefully I'll meet Mermaid Sky one day. She's really, really nice and very talented. I'm sure that you would get along well. Do you want to tell how you came up with the Mer Wrangler name? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. Tell me. Yeah, we uh, we had an event we were going to do out in Alberta, which is like Canadian Texas. So it, I, I lived in Alberta for almost a decade, and uh, I grew up there when I was really little. Anyway, we got an event that we were going to do out there, and they needed to fly me out, but they didn't quite understand what I would do while I was there. So we kind of threw around the idea well you know how like it's like a, a, a wrangler somebody who you know organizes and <laughs> gets gets everybody to where they need to be and they knew it right away as soon as we said it we're like oh yeah 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 okay no problem and the event didn't quite work out as we'd hoped um uh in the end but uh the, the name kind of stuck after that because it was such a you know perfect name at the moment so we just ran with like it. wrangling cows, but wrangling mermaids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's Alberta, right? So there's there's like prairies everywhere, cowboys all over the place. People wear cowboy boots, you know, in the office and stuff. So <laughs> it was just the kind of thing that they they knew right away. As soon as we said that, they were like, "Oh yeah, we get that." And it stuck. Yeah. It stuck. We used it, and then other people asked if they could use it too, and we said yes. And now oh, people yeah. use Mer Wrangler and Mer Tender. Yeah, there's so many cool names that are out there, and I find that the the community's so creative. They're always coming up with something else that's new and interesting, and you know, just sort of fun. Everybody just seems to have fun with it. So yeah, it's been great. Okay, the next question is about River. What is it like to be both um, um, a mermaid mom and your journey with how River came into this world? Yeah, River is just having a nap right now. But if he wakes up, Sean will bring him to say hi. Um, So Lewis knows this, but maybe some of the people watching don't. But Sean and I dealt with infertility for our whole relationship. And we didn't think that we could have children. And when we finally got pregnant with River, we had been trying and been together for 13 years at the time. Yeah. 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 And uh, I had actually lost some babies before River came along. And when we were pregnant and we found out that everything was healthy and we did a special blood test and it told us that River was a boy, we were trying to come up with a, a name for him and we were tossing names back and forth and nothing seemed to stick. And then I said, what about River? And Sean said, yeah, I like that. <laughs> right away. Just right away we knew. And it was funny too, even before that, it was it was about two years ago now that I was baking Christmas cookies and I was in the kitchen basically hanging out and we're just doing our thing. And Raina comes out and says, what's that awful smell? Oh. <laughs> and I'm making like gingerbread cookies and I've been making them for 20 years and I love them. And I'm thinking, what do you mean awful smell? She's like, something you're making is just smells awful. <laughs> and we just look at each other like, uh oh, because when you're pregnant, one of the very, very early signs is that things that normally smell good smell really bad. <laughs> so we didn't yeah. even know we were pregnant yet. But then we kind of knew. But then yeah. because the cookies smelled so bad, we decided to take a pregnancy test and it turned out that we were pregnant. So yeah. it was really funny. Um, And the whole time I was pregnant with River, he kicked a lot in my belly and it reminded me of a fish. So I called him my river trout. And when you have a baby after you've had miscarriages, the term that we use is called a rainbow because at the end of a rainbow, there is the treasure. So even if there's a big storm and and things are hard, 
there's a rainbow with a treasure. So River is a rainbow baby. So we called him Rainbow River Trout <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. And he would always kick in my belly and it would remind remind me. Um, I didn't get to do many mermaid gigs when I was pregnant because COVID-19 started and all of our gigs were stopped for a while. But I did swim a lot, which really helped me when I was pregnant, because the bigger I got, um, the harder it was to move around. And when I was in the water, it just took all the the weight off of me and I could move freely. And I felt like a submarine because when I was swimming, River would kick inside me even when I was in the water. So it felt weird. <laughs> and I think when we when we were when they did the California Mermaid Con, the digital version I was pregnant and I was watching the ball and River was kicking in my belly while I was watching the ball. <laughs> wow. I didn't know. I didn't know that's when you were pregnant and I didn't know that River was kicking inside of you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So when River was born, um, I lost a lot of blood and I had to stay in the hospital and get a blood transfusion. But we both were okay in the end. It was just a little scary in the beginning. And I really, really, really loved being a mom right away. And I told River's doctor, it's really important to us that because we do mermaid work and we're around the water, that River feels safe in the water. So our doctor gave us some suggestions because babies have a really hard time keeping warm in the water. Mm -hmm he told us to get him a wetsuit and little wetsuit booties. So we had to order a very specially made baby wetsuit. They usually don't make wetsuits until they're like two years old. And we got a special baby one and it was pink. <laughs> <laughs> so River had a little baby wetsuit and little booties. And we started taking him to the pool just to get him used to the water and used to the mermaids and he loved it he mm -hmm. loved it so much and then as he started to grow we started to take him with us to mermaid gigs and we would have sean would wear him on a special carrier or would have him in a stroller and then i would do like a performance in the mermaid tank and then i'd hop out and go backstage and feed river and then swap again and go back in the water. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of work. It's really hard to juggle being a mom and being a mermaid. And also, um, you know, it took a while for my body to get back to normal after I lost all that blood, even though I got a blood transfusion and it helped me feel good. I still like it takes your body a long time to recover. And so I was, you know, it took a long time to feel better and have energy. And it was a lot of work. But now River is 15 months old. So he's almost a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And he hangs on to me when I swim. And he has his own little mermaid tails that Mer Taylor made him. And he loves his mermaid tails. And just recently, we put a video of him in his mermaid tails on YouTube and it got 17 million views. It's crazy. So he's wow. <laughs> I've seen I've seen your secondary channel, Mermaid Fat, you know, what's it called? The Mermaid Mermaid Family. Mermaid family. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Mermaid Family. I've I've seen you talk about how, you know, you go to your gigs, you feed river, and of course I also seen the video where you did that one gig, you know with the COVID scare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I caught COVID at a gig because when we went to the gig that that week, they decided to drop all of the rules around masks and everything. And, um, and so people came to the gig sick. And thankfully, mm -hmm. River didn't get sick at that gig, but he did end up getting COVID mm -hmm. uh, a few months later. And he had to go to the hospital, actually, because yeah. Um, he it, had seizures. It gave him yeah. a seizure. So he had to go to the hospital. So it's really important that people who are sick uh, either stay away from babies or wear a mask because mm -hmm. babies don't have immune systems yet. They're, they're still getting used to the world. Mm -hmm. 
and River, um, you know, it was pretty scary when he had COVID, but yeah. thankfully he's okay now. And it's not just COVID, like RSV and all these other, this other viruses out there. And it's including just- the flu. Yeah, exactly. The flu, exactly. Yep. Yep. So we just want to keep all the babies keep safe, safe. So yeah, we don't want to make another trip to the hospital. And when we see these babies in there, it's, it's just so sad. Yeah. It'd be nice. Yeah. To, to took care of each other and, you know, have a nice healthy year. I'm really looking forward to 2023. So we hope everybody takes care of each other. But yeah. I really love sharing mermaid stuff with River. And I hope that he likes it and will want to be a merman. But I never force him. If I'm putting a tail on him and he doesn't like it mm-hmm. and he shows me that he doesn't like it, like he cries or he tries to pull it off, then I just take it off. I don't force him. But That's he al- yeah, he always really likes it. And if he's interested when he's older in being a merman, then I will teach him how to be a merman. And I hope he'll enjoy it. Speaking of of COVID and masks. In the wake of the pandemic and two years ago that I ended up catching the flu, I always wear masks in the wake of the pandemic. And because of that, and of course, when I go to Cozumel, masks are definitely coming with me. And I'm definitely wearing them indoors, especially because it's the cold, COVID, and flu and RSV season. Yes, we we wore masks when we flew to California. Yep. And it's not too bad when you're outside because the sun kills the germs, but being in buildings and Indoors, in in yeah. airplanes very important. Yeah, we I lost some family. I lost an aunt to COVID uh, early on. So Yeah, Sean's aunt died with COVID. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, so we're just we just don't want anyone else to feel bad and go through all of that and if we can prevent people from getting sick then that's great yeah it really doesn't hurt anyone to put a mask on when you have a chance yep good for you and of of course before we move on to the next subject i ended up getting some cloth masks from mer taylor and of course this occasional fish did make me some masks but i lost one of them here's here's one of the masks he made but the straps are broken on this Oh, I like the pattern, though. You probably wore it's, it a lot. Yeah. That's and it's great. irreversible. That's yep. great. The third question is how, your YouTube channels, Reign of the Mermaid and the Mermaid Family. Yeah. What is it like to work between those two channels? And is River also featured on your main channel as well? Yeah. So... We've gotten a little bit behind on our YouTube because um, I work from home. Sean and I both work another job from home and we take care of River and we do the mermaid. So it's a lot of work, Um, but we're hoping to catch up over Christmas, Mm -hmm. editing more of our videos. Our mermaid family channel is where we talk about what it's like running a business with a baby because I noticed that a lot of mermaids don't have many resources on how to do that. So I would like to share the tips and tricks that we figured out along the way so that it can help them. And then my main channel, Reina the Halifax Mermaid, I've had it for 11 years and I share tutorials on there for how I do things as a professional mermaid. I share reviews, we do unboxing videos, we do behind the scenes videos, and also swim videos and then we just started doing shorts which is very similar to tiktok and reels and we've been using our shorts to share little behind the scenes clips and people really seem to like those clips they're going viral so Mm -hmm. i think we got a total of 35 million views on our shorts so that's pretty cool (laughs) yeah speaking of youtube ever since i became a merman i started making merman videos of my own and yeah one of them includes my very first swim which of course last year a friend of mine with a pool let me use it so I decided to make a video about my very first swim and then I also did a short video of me doing my first beach shoot and then and then fast forward to 2022 Raina I ended up swimming in my tail again down the Jersey shore and doing another beach shoot. And That's course, amazing. And I plan to do another video about me being a merman while I'm in Cozumel. That's great. I think we need more merman videos. A lot of boys and men want to be mermen and they feel nervous or shy. 
So when you do it, you're helping other people do it too. Oh, it's the hatchling. Someone yeah. just woke up. He just woke up, so I'm gonna River. Call him a bit. River. <laughs> wow, it's nice to finally meet the little hatchling. Yeah, he He's... just woke up. His eyes have been only open for about 20 seconds, so he uh he'll take a peek at you in a second. He's just snuggling with his mom. He's a... understandable. Yeah. He's big. <laughs> He's grown so much, so much in this past year. It's crazy. What about when he becomes a toddler? His tails. Yeah, his yep. um his tails still fit him for now. And then um, we'll buy some of the kids' tails uh, when he's taller. But for now, they still fit him, thankfully. But there might be a, an in-between stage there. I'll have to talk to Candy at Mer Taylor. Might need some custom sizes. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. And go ahead. It's, continue what you say about your channels. Yeah, so I really enjoy having my YouTube channels. Maybe we can turn the blurry thing off. Um, I really yeah. enjoy having my YouTube channels, and I like to help other people be merfolk and be safe, and I like to inspire people. So I'm hoping that that keeps happening with those channels. That's understandable. <laughs> you okay, buddy? You of, course, to... of course, Raina, there's... There are two more. I mean, I mean to say, there's two more things before we wrap this up. And of course, you asked about Dive Heart earlier. Yes, I'd love to hear about it. They are a nonprofit organization based out of Chicago. I mean, suburb of Chicago called Downers Grove, and it started 21 years ago by a man named Jim Elliott, who has a daughter who's blind and he was an adaptive ski instructor he was originally a reporter for wgn which is a um tv station and radio station in chicago yes i did an interview for them a mm -hmm. few years ago in 2017 yeah. wgn radio <laughs> yeah jim worked for them and then he thought if this could work with adaptive with skiing then why not apply it to scuba diving and that's how dive heart was born born and of course they do help people with conditions similar to yours through scuba diving that's amazing and they do trips to, to places that is places like cozumel trip. that's who's yeah. doing your trip that's amazing I yes and not to mention they yeah they go to um key largo they also go to to grenada Panama, wow. and they also did a women's trip to Bonaire just last month. Wow. They help different types of people with disabilities, from those who are quadriplegics, wheel, people in wheelchairs are called wheelchair users, to people on the spectrum such as myself. And speaking of how I got involved with Dive Heart, it was because of my friend and mentor, Wendy Crown, who is friends with Jim Elliott. And I also discovered Dive Heart when they, when I did a video. I mean, and then, I mean, not, I mean, when, when WGN did a report on autism and scuba diving. And of course the person who's featured in the video who I've met on my numerous Cozumel trips is a man named Nick Johnson, who was with his father, Glenn, who's also, been on the trips I've been on and met and Nick it actually says he wants his own he said to me he wants his own dolphin tail or monofin of his own so will you teach him do you think give him a lesson <laughs> maybe maybe it's up to him yeah that would be really cool I think that's what an amazing program thank you for telling me about it mm -hmm. and if you want Raina I, I can give you and Sean the information on how to consider being a volunteer you, yourselves and, you know, think about it. Join that us would, on a trip one day. That mm. would be really amazing. I, I'm not scuba certified. I still have problems with my ears. I'm waiting to see a specialist uh, to see if I can have a laser surgery that would help my ears. And then I would have an easier time equalizing with scuba diving mm -hmm. because with my free diving right now, um, I can't go past five meters 
without my eardrums hurting um even though I've trained Mm -hmm. it's just that there's scar tissue in my ears from when I was sick so they you were born premature as well I was born premature there's a term it's called micro preemie because I was three months premature I was as big as your hand she was very tiny and I wasn't I was only one pound and I wasn't supposed to live and because of being born premature back then my inner ears didn't develop properly which is why I need the surgery um and why I sometimes have trouble hearing so yeah hopefully I can get the surgery and then I can learn to scuba dive it's on my bucket list I really want to scuba dive (laughs) um and of course Raina about what about the the dive heart yes they've also have had mermaids themselves but of course before we go since we're running out of time, what advice can you give to those who on the spectrum and with other disabilities similar to mine and yours if they want to become merfolk? Well, I believe that mermaiding is for everyone. And I have worked with people on the spectrum, mostly children um, who were learning to mermaid. So I think um, it's important to communicate what you're comfortable with because some people um, are okay wearing certain fabrics and tails and some people aren't and some people are okay with loud noises at the pool and some people do better if it's a quieter pool with one-on-one so I think it's important to advocate for what you want and need but I definitely hope that anybody who wants to be a mermaid or merman or merfolk whether you're autistic or you have pain like me or maybe you're not a great swimmer, or maybe you do have some paralysis. Mermaiding is very inclusive, and sometimes it takes a bit of time to find the right place to learn, or the right pod, or the right people. But don't give up, because everybody who wants to do it should be able to do it, because it's magical. And I do know some mermaids who don't swim. They just like to wear tails for photo shoots because they're not comfortable swimming. They're scared of swimming. And that's fun, too. That's valid, too. Mermaiding is all about imagination and having fun and making friends. So everybody deserves to do that. And if you need some help, I have a lot of advice on my website and on my YouTube. And Lewis was mentioning about the mermaid certification courses those are really great too you can take a course through patty or nawi to learn um and some places have swim schools where you can go as well to learn i think shiro's entertainment does like an introduction to mermaid swimming um kind of program and some dive places are starting to offer it too so it takes a little bit of work to look around and and try to figure out where to go and, and who to talk to. But Facebook groups are great to meet merfolk. Mer Network is a website that's great to meet people. And even just commenting on YouTube videos is great. And Lewis and I know each other from the California Mermaid Convention. Mm-hmm. So if you're starting out or you want to start out, coming to a convention is a great way to start because you make new friends. You can learn about the tales. And sometimes there's workshops. Thank you, Raina. Thank you, Sean, for your time. River, can you say hi? <laughs> River. <laughs> River, look. Look. He's up there. Hi. Hi. Say hi. He's so sleepy. He just He's woke just, up. <laughs> just woke up. All okay. right. Take care. Thank, Thank you, you so much. For- well, that was great to hear from Raina and Sean. And I'm glad they told me about their journey on how they became both a mermaid and a mer-wrangler. And, of course, I also got to meet Little River in the process. In the meantime, this is Lewis saying, thanks for watching, everyone. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, and TikTok. And remember, 